interacting with web APIs in Rust doesn't have to be really annoying. Uh, I got myself into a big tangle a few days ago on stream when I was trying to uh, uh, interact with a web API and constructing types um, and to specify to match exactly what the input data was going to, or sorry, the data from the API was going to look like. It turns out that none of that is sort of necessary. And uh, this is what we are going to be covering today. So I would like to access some API and I think a great thing to do would be to figure out how many people there are in space. And Open Notify provides such an API. Uh, and what I would like to do is kind of get the resource, you know, make a re get request uh, and then parse the JSON and then have that uh, return back as some sort of response or RESP uh, variable. Now the question marks if you're unfamiliar with Rust mean that uh, these functions return a result that could have an error. And we are essentially ignoring the possibility of error and asking the program to just halt and crash uh, if that occurs. And we expect that the happy thing to, uh, we expect that the API won't break uh, under us. And that's what the question mark is doing without a lot of ceremony. It turns out to do this, you kind of need to define some sort of struct typically. Uh, and then Rust will or request the library that we'll be using for HTTP requests. Um, we'll kind of know what to do. So what does the astronauts in space type look like? Well, uh, here is one attempt. It's, uh, it's, we've got a message field, a count, which is a number field of the number of people in space, and then the names of the people that are in space. And so we define an astronaut type as well, which has a name and the spacecraft that they're on. And uh, that's a lot of work if you're just playing around. There is an alternative, which is to just you uh, ask request to convert things into surday, uh, the surday JSON underscore value, the, the surday underscore JSON value type. So surday underscore JSON is a third party crate uh, in the surday uh, ecosystem. And uh, then we can do things like just asking for that number field and it will quote unquote just work. So let's uh, see that in practice. Uh, here I have uh, a bit of a, a screen, um, <laughs> a bit of a screen. Here I have my text editor up and uh, a little cargo program. So at the moment I will just run as is. Um, it will print out the, the uh, open notify astronauts API, um, I can uh, pipe that, let's say, into curl. Oh, that wasn't happy. Um, let's try this. I get a um, <clears throat> success. We've got number 10, and there's a whole bunch of uh, names there, and, and the spacecraft that they are flying, or the, the people fly into, they fly into space, but are they flying when they are in space? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, so stop mucking around. And uh, first I'm gonna go back to the cargo.toml file and bring in the request library. And it's convenient to just sort of say, I'll have the version star. But in fact, I want to provide a specific version as well as um, some extra features. And so I'll just copy and paste them essentially from the cheat sheet that I've got off the screen. Uh, version 0 0.11 and the features JSON, which means that it automatically provides JSON deserialization. Uh, blocking means that uh, we can just have a synchronous API. I don't need to uh, you worry about async Rust. Uh, gzip and uh, deflate are compression methods which uh, HTTP servers provide. And this is just a way to make sure that I'm all only bringing back the shortest amount of data over the wire. Um, I also need this survey underscore JSON thing. Uh, and for now, I probably don't actually need to specify it in that syntax. And so I can just say survey JSON. Uh, back into main.rs. So I need to bring a few things in. Uh, let's bring in the 
a request library and it's blocking submodule and then there's that get method. Now I can actually, uh, let's say, get the URL uh, and this won't be especially happy. Uh, you can see here that the it returns back some sort of type, uh, some result thing. Now we can try and see if it has a debug implementation uh, and run the program as is. So if I run cargo run again, it's actually making, oh, it's compiling the, I'll oh, take away some of the, out, bring in some of the output. It's compiling the dependencies and now compiling the thing and we actually we get it back an okay response, uh, which is quite handy, which is exactly what we want. And, uh, but we don't have any data available with it yet. So we actually are half of the way there. I remember that I wanted that question mark. Um, <clears throat> the question mark is not going to be very happy with me yet. Um, and that's because the main type doesn't uh, know about, um, we don't quite have the right uh, return type for the question mark to operate effectively. It's saying that it needs to be used with the error message. Um, it's a little bit unclear. Can only be used in a function that returns return result or option. And so we're going to return a, a result and that result is going to have the unit type. In fact, it might, no, the unit type and we're going to bubble back the error from that's defined within the request module. We're going to, because this is what get is going to be returning. So we'll just return that all the way up. Uh, we also need to change our return value and clear the screen and run it again. And now actually we get our response back again uh, and we're nearly there. So. JSON will do the similar thing. It will attempt to take the body of the request, parse it as JSON, and then uh, ignore the error type. But we get this problem with the type inference. The type inference has got this exclamation mark, which is actually a hint to me as a programmer that Rust doesn't have enough information. What I recommended was that we use a JSON value. And now the request uh, will actually enable us. So this request thing has changed its type to this value thing. And it will actually have one of the fields in there. As long as I'm right, I'm a bit, number 10. Ah, okay. So this is interesting. So why is, uh, it not just an integer. Well, this is because we have a, we don't have, uh, because it's a survey JSON value type. And that is an enum with all possible types of, um, like let's say JSON data. What we probably need is, let's see if we can get it out. By the way, we're sort of half done. We want to be able to, uh, Uh, <laughs> we're half done in the sense that we have freed ourselves from needing to define a type to handle the, uh, we didn't need to define an astronaut or anything like that, but we do want to kind of extract the value. And uh, we have here as I 64, and we're going to bring in the as, U64, and then this will probably, I'm just going to see it's an option. And I bet I can just, I'm going to uh, confuse the type inference as well, because do you remember I said we're only gonna worry about the um, uh, request error? We now need to be able to return anything 
that returns something which implements the standard error trait. And it turns out that um, Ah, okay. So actually, I'm wrong. We'll do it. We'll follow this a different strategy. We'll just return request error, and I'm going to unwrap or provide a default value. A default value is zero, and now the number of um, Here we go. I think we're close to being finished now. Ten astronauts in space. Well done. <laughs> so there you have it. You can actually avoid needing to define a strongly typed structure by just uh, sidestepping and sidestep all of that by relying on pseudo, um, the pseudo JSON value type, um, and that will work for you. I hope you have had a little bit of fun and you're going to use Rust more and more for these kind of quick and dirty hacks uh, that you might have, say, used Bash or even Python.